Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Corey, better known as the C-Man, and I want to welcome you to another edition of the C-Man's Cinema Sit Down. I, I tell you what, man, it, it feels feels good to be home. I have not been in this chair in quite some time, man, uh, between work, uh, traveling, bachelor parties, getting really, really sick. Um, it has been a while since I've been able to sit down right here, and I promise you we got a whole lot to catch up on uh, in the coming week or so. Uh, but today, today I'm just dedicating today to one movie, man. I went and saw this movie last night at an early access screening. Thank you, DC Universe. Um, if you're a DC Universe subscriber, you get to do cool things like I got to do last night, like see this movie a couple days early. Heck, it even beat the embargo, which lifts today, so I get to have my review out actually on time. Another thing I've not been very good at. Um, but on top of all that and getting to see the movie early, uh, you know, we got a little swag bag that gave us like a poster and some discount cards. That's cool. But the moment of the night, was when, uh, you know, they, they came out and they were, like, getting ready to introduce the movie. And before they did that, they brought out writer Christina Hodson, director Kathy Yan, um, actress Ella J. Basco, actress Rosie Perez, actress Journey Smollett-Bell, actor Ewan McGregor, and the one, the only, Margot Robbie A.K.A. Harley Quinn. Oh, you know what we're talking about, baby. Pull up a chair. Take a seat. We're getting ready to dive in spoiler free into Birds of Prey and the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn. Um, Wow, man. I tell you. It's, I was talking to my friend uh, Crystal, who uh, you guys have seen pop up on my Twitter before at cons. Uh, we're both DC Universe subscribers, so we were both there last night and... It's one of these things where I think we're finally starting to get to a point where I don't necessarily inherently trust everything that DC is going to throw at us, but I think I can get excited for everything that they're throwing at us because this is another big time hit in a big time moment, man. Um, this thing was so much fun. It is action packed um, and it just nails the main character it nails all its characters pretty pretty well man and I, I mean we already know what we're getting with margot and harley quinn and, and to get it in a full-fledged movie um that she is in control of was a lot of fun and you know there was a lot of questions that like oh why are we gonna go with birds of prey and margot robbie had even come out and said she's like look everyone knows catwoman and and, and poison ivy and that's why she wasn't gonna go do sirens she wanted to introduce people to some of the other characters like Huntress and uh, Black Canary, uh, e even, you know, R Renee Montoya. Um, and, and utilizing the Birds of Prey concept, everyone was kind of like, oh, man, like she's ripping off something that's not hers as far as Harley Quinn goes. Um, you know, it should be Oracle or Batgirl in there. Um, but the way they utilize it, that's why the name of the movie is so long. There is a clear distinction. And it really introduces the Birds of Prey in a cool way. Um, and you get to hang out with them. And hopefully there's more for them to come. Um, I thought that was something cool um, that Margot was able to do with this movie while also delivering just a slam dunk Harley Quinn performance giving us uh, an iteration of Black Mask that I thought was extremely enjoyable, um, as well as an iteration of Victor Zaz that I thought was extremely enjoyable. Now, before we dive into all the things that I loved in this movie, and there's lots of it, um, two things that, that I do draw issue with. Uh, one, before the movie even came out, it was teased that they were going to uh, make Black Mask uh, gay, which I was so on board for. Like, he, he's a character that... I think could totally play in that realm. And when you see Ewan McGregor's performance, you could totally see why and how that could work. Um, and, and, you know, it was kind of teased beforehand. Then a a after I think it was the premiere um, or one of the events leading up to the premiere for it, I believe it was Variety, I uh, got a chance to talk to McGregor and, and Messina. And we saw a clip come out where, where the two of them kind of talked about the relationship. And we'll use their own words. Uh, first things first, they said it's very complicated. The relationship is 
ship is very much based. Uh, there's a want and a need in there for sure. That's what McGregor says. Um, Cena adds that there's a real love of anarchy. And then when kind of pushed again, like, are they in a relationship? McGregor added, uh, more than likely, yes. And the actors both laugh. We've seen images uh, of the actors, you know, kissing each other on the cheek. They certainly have been playing it up. And I was totally here for it. And this might be a mild spoiler, but you will find no traces of a relationship between the two of them at all in the movie. Um, if anything, if you go in with the mindset thinking that's what's going on, it kind of feels like here's this giant like mob lord boss who's trying to take over Gotham who doesn't want people necessarily to know that he's in a relationship uh, with his right-hand man. And pretty much every time they're on screen, there's always someone else in the room. So you never really get to have a moment between the two of them that really solidifies or confirms the fact that they are in a relationship. If you go in with that mindset, you can totally see all the things that could have been at play because the relationship between the two in the movie is fantastic. I really liked watching Messina and McGregor go back and forth and have their moments, and it did feel like underneath all of that conversation, there was something deeper in there, but you never see it. Um, and that, for me, was kind of disappointing. Um, it's one of those, like, if you're going to tease it, that you're going to do one of these things, like, full-on commit to it. Um, and it's not that it drastically takes away from the movie, but when you talk about it and you put it out there and it's not there, you have to at least comment on it. And it would have been nice to have seen just a moment that kind of could have solidified that relationship. And the other problem that I have with the movie also revolves around Black Mask, and specifically how the character is handled at the end of the film. There's something that happens that I, I think general crowds might like or enjoy who aren't really familiar with uh, the character or the comics. Because my crowd, which was filled out, man, packed, packed theater last night, in an IMAX theater, lots and lots of seats, place was wild, it was a great time exploded into cheering when you know and style like gave a real positive reaction to the thing that i, I disliked and i think that's because uh, probably you're missing some things but if you know the comic books i think you might have a real gripe to, to kind of get at there and it was just a disappointing thing to see on the screen because it was like oh why did you like you could have done and i don't want to ruin it but i i was not happy with how the black mask character was handled at the end of the movie. Those are my two gripes with the film. After that, I've got very, very little to complain about because this thing is a pretty good ride. Um, I think Kathy Yen does a pretty solid job behind the director's chair. Um, I did think it took a little while to, to get her tone um, because it comes off, uh, you know, there, there's very a lot of similarities to Deadpool in, in the fact that Harley is narrating uh, the story to us. So she breaks the fourth wall and talks directly to us a couple times, which is cool. Absolutely love it. Um, but at the beginning, you're kind of, like, oh, okay, we're doing this type of thing, looking to get your footing in, like, some that might be more comedic, and there is lots of comedy in the movie, uh, but it, it's certainly a darker, more Suicide uh, Squad-esque tone, and it did take a little while to kind of, for the movie to find its footing in that tone, but once it did, I think it thrives uh, through and through, and I'll say this, this is, feels... Very much like a movie that was not going to forget about where it came from. Uh, this feels very in line with Suicide Squad. You could argue that this is really like a direct sequel to Suicide Squad. But if you ask me, it's a big step up from Suicide Squad. There's a lot of things that I really liked about Suicide Squad in uh, the way that it introduces the characters to the audience. Um, I thought that was a really cool way to kind of do it, and I enjoyed that because these are characters that the mainstream culture I don't think is super familiar with. So to get, you know, some backstory and the way they do that stuff, it's funny, it's inventive and creative, and I thoroughly enjoyed it, and it kind of falls in line with what Suicide Squad did. But I think there's a whole lot more meat on the bone in this movie than what we had in that first uh, iteration of Harley Quinn that we got in that Suicide Squad movie. And I think they took the things that worked well in there and just added them to this and amplified it. And uh, like I said, I think y Yan does a pretty decent job, as does Christina Hodson. Uh, I think that the movie flows fairly nicely, um, and it's pretty easy to follow, and it was a good introduction to a lot of these characters. Um, so for that, I give them a lot of credit. But there's one other person who you won't see in the credits anywhere that deserves a big shout-out. And we had heard word back when they were getting ready to do reshoots that Chad Stahelski was coming in uh, to, to help redo the action. And 
The action sequences are amazing, and you can feel Chad Stahelski all over this thing, man. Like, you just sit there, and a lot of the action sequences, you're just like, oh, man, you went and you got the right guy. And it made me excited because Stahelski, at this point, he's done all those John Wick movies. There's a very, very particular vibe to that action, and there's a very, very particular way in which they go about doing that stuff and the way it looks. You get vibes like that. There are moments in this movie that feel very John Wick, and that's where you know it for sure it's Tahelski. But you got to see him work in a different world, and what he did from a creative standpoint with his action makes me super excited for anything Tahelski's got going on going forward. It makes me super excited for John Wick, and makes me hope that Mr. John Wick gets to wield a baseball bat because I know Harley Quinn is gonna be the one to have done it first. But, oh, I would love to see John, you know, John Wick get something new to use every movie. We haven't seen him kill anybody with a baseball bat. I would take that because the way Harley Quinn wields a bat in this movie. Holy cow, man. There, there are two sequences um, that are just mind-blowing. And one we've seen the previews of when she goes into the police station. Um, when she gets into the evidence locker. Wow, dude. And that's the scene I'm talking about with the baseball bat. Like, you just sit there and go, wow. And what's awesome is one, whoever Margot Robbie's stunt double was, phenomenal casting, looks so much like her, because there are a lot of moments where you get glimpses of her face, and you, you're wondering, is it Margot, is it the stunt double? But the actions kind of make me think that's the stunt double. But Margot Robbie does a lot of her own action in this movie, um, and it amplifies. Like I said, anytime you can see the face of the actor doing the stunts, it amplifies what's going on from the stunt side. And then, in the finale, uh, there's a funhouse sequence that is absolutely mind-blowing it might be some of the best stuff i've ever seen stahelski work on assuming that it was him um but i mean when you watch it it's hard to think that it's anybody but him um and that that worked so well man when you mix all that amazing action uh, and the way that harley can wield a baseball bat or a mallet and how he uses black canary and huntress and, and even renee montoya into those sequences so much fun to watch and then amplify all that with great comedy um, and just things that just felt Harley Quinn, man. And it really made it all enjoyable. But like I said, the thing that makes this the most enjoyable is the cast. And look, I, I, I could go on and on and on and on and on about Miss Margot Robbie. She was the perfect casting in Suicide Squad for, for Harley Quinn. She was the best part of Suicide Squad. And here, getting to see her in a full-fledged movie um, where, you know, like she said, she's kind of emancipating herself. She's shedding herself of Joker. Um, it was so fun to see her just own this thing start to finish and she is harley quinn man and it's not because of the big things or the look or, or the stuff that's obvious it's the little things it's the little ways her, her face will move or the way she'll just break into a constant stream of thought really really fast with all these big words because she's a psychiatrist and all of a sudden she's saying something super super smart and like two seconds later she says something and you're like how are you the same person and those are the things that work so well with Harley Quinn that Margot just absolutely crushes it uh which was to be expected um and I thought she crushed it even more than I was expecting um I was just so happy with, with what she does she is the perfect Harley Quinn she's the only person that should ever play Harley Quinn in live action um and like I said getting to see her do a lot of her own stunt work and action sequences amplify everything that she's got going on in the movie um but I might argue that your bigger takeaways from this, because we knew we were going to get that out of Margot, uh, was the rest of this cast, man. Um, Rosie Perez, who comes in as Renee Montoya, exactly what you hope to get from Rosie Perez, man. She's a little firecracker still. Um, I mean, when she came into the theater last night, the place exploded. I went bananas, man. She got, outside of Margot, probably the loudest uh, uh, round of applause um, right there with Journey Smollett Bell. And, and she's great, man. I thoroughly love Rosie, and it was so cool to see her inserted in here in a way where we get to see some Renee Montoya. And, like I said, it kind of sets up where you could bring her back and use this Birds of Prey group in a way that would be really, really cool. Um, as I mentioned, Journey Smollett Bell is in there, and she is probably the co-MVP with Margo. Like, after Margo, for me, it's Journey Smollett Bell, because she is on fire in this movie, man. From from the singing to her action sequences, which are really cool, man. She has a lot of high kick leg kicks and really tight pants. Um, and it's impressive every time she does it. But I enjoyed her action sequences. When you finally get to that Black Canary moment, you're just like, oh, yes, it's so good. And then 
there's uh, it's funny it kind of melts off toward the end as she gets to be around these girls a little bit more she kind of lets her personality out and when she starts to let her personality out there's a moment where she smiles in the movie and laughs two of my, like she kind of does one of these businesses two of my favorite moments in the movie because all of a sudden it was just like phew, set on fire and you're like yeah this this girl has something special and it was cool to watch it unfold on screen now, if you were going to go Dark Horse MVP, I'm going Mary Elizabeth Winstead, uh, someone whom I'm a fan of. Um, you know, I've seen her in a bunch of things, and she's pretty serious. And you get Huntress. Huntress is a pretty serious character. She's badass, man. Um, and I thought they did a wonderful job uh, with her origin story as Helena Bertinelli. Uh, how they play that into it really worked, I thought, quite well and gave you some nice background information for people who are unfamiliar with the character. But then her delivery is some of the best stuff in the movie. She only gets a couple lines and a couple moments. Uh, she, she definitely doesn't get as much screen time as, uh, obviously, Margot or Journey Smollett-Bell or even Rosie Perez or Ella J. Basco. Um, but when she opens her mouth, her comedic timing... I didn't expect there to be comedy from Huntress, but her comedic co- timing might be the best in the movie. She's phenomenal, man. I, like, I was like, I want so much more Huntress. Like, give me that. And the way they used her character, I just thought was awesome. Um, Ella J. Basco, who I also just mentioned, um, who plays Cassandra Kane, thought she did a really solid job. Um, I, I was hoping and maybe expecting a, a little bit more, I think, from her, and maybe specifically with her relationship with Harley. Um, and, and I would have liked maybe a little bit more out of that. But she has some really, really nice moments and, and stuff that I think you, you could build on going forward. But I, I you know, I wasn't blown away way but thoroughly enjoyed her she definitely gives you a couple nice moments to laugh and smile and you know she handles her own in the course of the movie um some of her pickpocketing is wildly obvious uh, and that was kind of a little some one of those little wonky spots like when you see when you're seeing her pickpocket stuff you're just like how is she getting away with half of these pickpockets uh it doesn't seem to be like you know very nonchalant or or mysterious about what she's doing um but overall i thought she was uh fine and then you know this is a very very pro women movie uh you know women and and kind of taking on their own you know self you know a lot of stuff what's going on with harley and and just the women in general in the movie renee montoya too um it's really pro women and i'm all for it man and it works really well because i didn't think it was shoved down your throat or in your face from a feminist side standpoint but definitely hits Things that make a lot of sense in this story to play up that element of it. And I thought that worked well. But we do have two guys in this movie that are absolutely electric. Even though I got some issues with not seeing more of of them. What we get uh, from Chris Messina as Victor Zaz and Ewan McGregor as Black Mask is just wonderful, man. I loved what they did with both of these characters and how they utilize them outside of like giving us some more on their relationship but what they asked them to do on screen i thought worked really well man messina has this like just low end sizzle like yeah i know i'm the number two but like i'm a really good number two and i'm like right here and oh man dude like look at all these and i mean they got the scars they talk about that stuff they hit all the things that you want in zaz and i thought messina just brought a really interesting take to the character um he seemed more in control while also showing you that he's bad shit crazy and a lot of the moments that just small back and forth things between him and black mass that are just wonderful and then ewan mcgregor was on fire man he he bought into a role and just went with it man this little curly like little hand movement that we've seen in the trailer in the movie is what like they use it multiple times it works wonderfully um his flamboyancy totally would have suited a character that's gay if they would have wanted to really fully commit to it um it's all there um and the way he acts the way he has his artwork and these kind of eccentric type things um really really i thought played well and then he was also able to dip into moments where he felt like the comic book Black Mask, man, where he is super scary, intimidating, this big kind of a more tough guy um, in certain moments of the movie, specifically when he has the mask on. When he puts that black mask on, and it is a cool black mask. I thought it was more uh, like a motorcycle helmet, but it's actually made of leather. Um, and it, was, it worked really well when it was actually on him. Um, and he kind of goes into a different mode when that mask is on, and that... 
oh, I was sitting there was like, oh man, that feels so right. And when you combine it all together, I thought it made a really awesome iteration. I mean, he's a ton of fun. He's he's got this humor, but he's got this terror that that lives in him that I just thought worked so well. I just wish they would have handled like one or two things differently, so it would have been an un- unbelievable knock it out of the park. But what you get from every actor in this movie it is nothing but their best that everybody is bringing it in this one um and i think all together it just creates a, a really fun dc harley quinn movie man i mean like i said the action sequences are great the comedy is fantastic you love watching all of the people who are on screen be on screen and you just want more of all of them i cannot wait to see more harley come suicide squad and whatever else they want to use her for uh, at this point put her in all the movies man because she's so good I-, I could take margo as harley quinn all day every day but like i said they also do a really good job in setting up the birds of prey and i want more of them i want to watch journey smollett bell and-, and mary elizabeth winstead and rosie perez on screen in their own movie and maybe you could pull me in some barbara gordon or oracle probably would make sense to go with the barbara gordon batgirl angle before we get to oracle because it would just be nice to see batgirl done correctly in a movie i would love to see her pulled in you could totally see how they can um and i hope we get to see more more of the birds of prey so when you put it all together man you get a movie that really does a good job of setting up both elements of its massively long title and the things that are are very harley quinn when you get to her place um you know she's got her one hyena she doesn't have two yet but she's got one bruce fantastic i really enjoyed what they did with him um and then you've seen it i think in the trailers uh the beaver which is very very iconic from uh the the comic book whether or not you, you think it's a stupid kid joke or why it's there i think it's one of those things that fits the character so well and having the beaver in the movie and the way they utilize it in the movie without making any beaver jokes um i just thought it was awesome and i was like oh it was just one of those nice things to see and that's the stuff that i think like just thrives through this movie all the way through that you can't walk out of here going anything other than like that was super enjoyable um and it's it's another positive step in the right direction for dc as they continue to turn this thing around and be in a spot where people, I think, can get excited for their movies every time they come out. So, boom! There you go, man. Those are all the Seaman's wildly long-winded, uh, non-spoiler thoughts on Birds of Prey. Uh, there was so much to talk about because uh, it was just it was awesome. I, I really, really enjoyed it, man. And, uh, again, thank you uh, to, to DC and Warner Brothers. Uh, last night you put on a, a, what felt like a, a premiere kind of feeling, man, with, with tickets and a really great entrance set up. And, and then to have the cast and you know writer and director show up. It was just so cool. So on a personal note, this has no impact on me liking or disliking the movie. Um, but it was it was a really well done event um, by DC and Warner Brothers. Thank you uh, for giving us DC Universe folks, uh, you know, a, a chance to do something cool and get a moment like what I got last night. Um, and then delivered the movie that we we wanted on top of it. Man, my crowd seemed very happy. I hope this thing does crazy at the box office. I just hope people go and enjoy it um, because. It's hard not to enjoy Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. So there you go, man. All my non-spoiler thoughts all right there for you. Now I want to know what you're thinking. Um, As I said, the movie comes out uh, this Thursday. Uh, so tomorrow it'll come out. Um, So if you were at one of these early screenings and you saw the movie, what were you thinking, man? Did, did you like it? Did you dislike it? What was working? Not working? Try to keep that spoiler free. We put it all down below what we know what was, was about Harley. Did you love the Birds of Prey stuff? What were your thoughts on Black Max and Zazz? All that can go down there. And if you haven't seen the movie, as the old sea man enticed you, I hope I have, dude, because this it's a fun movie, man. If you liked Suicide Squad, you should love, I think, this movie. And if you liked elements of Suicide Squad, I think it takes those elements that you liked, amplifies it, and just adds a lot of meat to the bone. That was always my biggest problem with Suicide Squad, outside of the villain usage and, and the lack of meat on the bone. Um, this has got plenty of meat to chew on, man, and uh, it's a lot of fun, so I hope I've enticed you, but let me know if you're interested in this movie, if you're excited for this movie, uh, what you're hoping to get out of this movie, or if you just don't care 
all of the things that you guys at home are thinking, go down below in the comments so that we can talk about it, man. I love that conversation with you guys. And I've been away for a little while, so I'm looking forward to some conversation on this one. Uh, so make sure you definitely hit those comments. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new, you want to come hang out with the old C man anytime we talk in DC, comic book movies, Harley Quinn, heck, we might do some spoiler conversations, maybe talk about what happens with Black Mask um, and why that bothered me and rubbed me the wrong way. You want to be involved in all that? Boom! Jump over there, man. Hit that subscribe button uh, so I pop up in your feed and you can come join all the Cinema Sit Down, uh, you know, fun that we have here with the Cinema Sit Down squad. And, uh, you know, if you really, really like what we're doing over here, hit that uh, little bell that comes after. You'll get alerts immediately when I drop a new video. So do that uh, for me and I will stay over here and get back to cranking on some content uh, for you guys. I'm glad to be home and back in the chair. But until next time for the C-Man Cinema Sit Down. I'm the sea man. I'm sounding no peace. Well, I'll be. You guys are still here. You must be looking for some more content. Well, don't worry. Sea man's got you covered, man. You got videos like this guy and this guy. And if you haven't yet and you want to come check out all the sea man goodies, join the cinema sit down squad, man. Hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the little bell down below that, too, so you can get alerts every time I make new videos.